Hey guys, I'm Mike. I'm a GP in Manchester, UK, and I'm also a university tutor at one of the medical schools nearby. And in this short video, I want to share with you the three best ways to cure you from Zoom fatigue. We'll do this by going through a very simple three-step process called stop, start, and zoom in. Finally, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you my Zoom setup and give you some extra tips on lighting. So let's get started. Once a week, I run a whole day session with anywhere between 10 and 15 third-year medical students, and we do this over Zoom. And Zoom fatigue is definitely becoming a thing. This obviously doesn't only apply to medical students. I mean, I had my mental capacity and prevent training online, and although the training was very good, I couldn't help feeling slightly drained and listless afterwards. Not yet recognized in the ICD-10 or soon to come out ICD-11, Zoom fatigue is definitely a thing. And here are the symptoms. Let's make an end to this with SSZI. Step one is stop. Oh, hang on, this actually might be really important. Aw, such a cute little kitty. So I think step one is pretty obvious at this stage, just stop multitasking. And there are two sources of distraction when you're on Zoom. The first one's your phone, and the second one is your computer. I saw a really cool video about a medical student who used to hide his phone under his bed when he was revising just to avoid that distraction. Now, in terms of your computer, turn off your mail, turn off WhatsApp, turn off Messenger, and you can also turn off your notifications. And on a Mac, you can do it like this, and on a PC, you can do it like this. Now, I'm not gonna say this is easy. This is gonna require a lot of self-control, but let's be honest, we can all see it when you're multitasking. The sudden change in facial expression, the wandering eyes, wait for it, wait for it, there it is. It will definitely contribute to your Zoom fatigue. Step two is start. Start having screen-free breaks. Most Zoom sessions will have some kind of comfort breaks or even a lunch break. And again, with such a screen-intensive day, try to resist the urge to jump straight onto your phone or straight onto your computer. Delay your gratification. Make yourself a promise that after this session, I'm gonna spend 60 minutes of uninterrupted scrolling, either on my phone, checking emails, social media, and hopefully that promise will get you through the session. Now, step three is zoom in. The constant stimulus of 15 plus faces, including your own, will wear you out. If you can, switch to speaker view and try concentrating on the person who's actually talking rather than looking at yourself or looking at other people. Some people actually like to switch off their own view and you can do it like this. Finally, I promised you a bonus at the end. When I'm working remotely or on Zoom, I prefer to do it at a desk dressed in work or semi-work clothes rather than laying in bed in my pajamas with the laptop swimming in the folds of my duvet. You know who you are. The latter will just send the wrong messages to your brain. You will be less attentive and you will be less receptive. Lastly, a lot of people use natural light to light up their faces and an excellent source of this is a window. So when I am teaching, I'll generally put my laptop in front of a window just to avoid the graininess of a dark face. That's it guys. I hope it was informative. If you did find that useful, give me a thumbs up, like this video. If you have any other tips, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like these, please subscribe. Otherwise, good luck.